I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes? I wasn't here. I did look at them. But Any I questions on them? I didn't get them. I have any questions. Okay. I'd make a motion to approve Mr. Gardner's chair. And I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Pass 3 0. Commissioner of Comments and Committee Reports. Bill, do you have any? I have none. I don't have any either. Okay. I Thursday, have night, Thursday night, they wanted us to come to the Soil Conservation, and I got a conflict of interest because you said you were some of those. So. Yes, there's a Soil Conservation meeting this Thursday night. I'm uh, planning an attendant. Hmm? Okay. I'm planning an attendant. Okay. Um, you have to get school, right? Yes, high school at 6 p.m. Um, another couple things that are coming up that I thought I would announce. The Boys and Girls Club is having a spaghetti dinner at Cedar Ridge, March 6th, 5.30 to 7.30. And then the Project Concern Soup and Chili Supper, uh, Saturday, March 3rd, from 5 to 7. Just got to have those in my calendar. Okay. I didn't have any other reports or anything for myself. Can we discuss that later? Yeah, just okay. New business. Do we have anything? I noticed in our <coughs> in our bills we had a uh, ten thousand for the Y. How many more years do we have on that? Did you? This year would be the fourth year. So we have one, only one year. So 19. Yeah, 19. So I think you guys agreed to do it for five years. Correct. From my understanding. Originally, and then was that the original five years, and then we added one more? No. We originally it was a dollar amount. They was they got promised a hundred thousand, and and we voted for fifty thousand. So I come up with a solution of splitting in the middle. So we waived fifteen thousand tipping fee. And then the uh, five years we extended it the way I remember. Well, the, um, I know that's the, the gist of it, but I didn't know when it started. So I wanna, we want to make sure that the original, there was an original set amount of payments, so then it was one more year extended when we finalized the agreement. So. We had paid what three years before the. Uh, I don't know what we were doing. <coughs> I don't know. I was, I was thinking that next year comes up. I can go back, double check the minutes. Okay. And, but I know that we've only made three payments. This will be. The and then we were going to see uh, possibly if we could get that one of the payments to theater action if we had. Authorized use. Corrections on here. Uh, Pat, we've got the, um, the list of purchase order and, and claims, but there are the uh, first allocations for 2018 to sort of different funds. Do we need to vote whether we do that or we just sign it? I think we just sign it. Feel free. We've already, uh, we've already got to do that. Feel free to. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. 
probably probably be in there. Okay. I think there's 22 or 23. Get all of them. You're not going to check them later because mm -hmm. some of them are sticking together. So. Money guys. I don't know if that easy, but it's going out. Yeah. It's kind of an eye opener again. You can go the wrong way. Well, we support a lot of things in this community and this county. It's amazing. And I don't think people realize how much we do. And it's good for the right causes. Deposits, it would be an advantage not to give the, you know, here we are committing February to what we committed for the whole year. If we could draw interest on that. Well, we have been for a since bit. December. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of it we have been. That's the reason it goes out this time, it goes out as late as we can. Correct. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, the, the disbursements are going, could have went out in January, technically, but I mean, they go out as late as possible, so there's an investment. I mean, we're, right. we're the funds yeah, are. Yeah, we're paying for something that we committed about eight months. 
Mm-hmm. It's for the allotment for the year, so I don't know when we couldn't wait till November. Well, so we we'll give seventy five hundred dollars to Juneteenth and seventy five hundred dollars to the Chamber of Commerce, plus we pay for membership. Or what was the first one I didn't? Okay, we we'll pay seventy five hundred dollars to June to, to sorry to Amelia Art Festival. Yes, seventy five hundred dollars to. Atchison, uh, Tourism. Atchison Chamber, Area Chamber of Commerce. And we pay a membership? Yeah. And we pay for, okay. The, um, that's how it's been since I've been before. The oh, Amelia Earhart uh, is the same as there. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not disagreeing with doing it. I didn't realize the Chamber of Commerce and Amelia Earhart got 7,500 pages. I said, I thought we were just given seventy five hundred million a heart and the dues. Okay. I understand. Can I stick out and go to my desk or I have an email I need to get printed? Yes. It's not letting Kaylee print it. Okay. Yeah, because we'll just the city of Atchison gives them over two hundred thousand. So. I've been working with uh what? for a million? No for uh, Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce. I think of twenty-five thousand. I've been working with um, them on the United Way breakfast that's coming up. And I don't know, do I have the date? I believe the date has been set for April. I don't know who the lead person is on the government committee, but we may start that process now. I'll have to ask Michelle about that. We talked about that last last week. I believe it's the thirteenth. I don't have it on on here. I'll double check with that. April. Yeah. It's Thomas Jefferson's birthday. Is that a Friday? But that'd be a Friday. Yeah, it is. It is a Friday, and it's Friday the thirteenth. I'm going to check that again. And if you come to town, you three black cats on the front of you. Ooh, boy, you're in trouble. Yeah, you have any other new business? Board? Got a bid opening at 1.30. I have two items I can Okay. Do we have to vote on uh, Seth, the uh, wildlife guy that was here this morning. That that's there's be more information to come on that. Correct. I I think we gotta wait, let him bring the numbers to us, discuss, and then we'll approve. Um, as long as you guys are all in agreement that we want to move forward a little bit further, see what other information you can give us. Then uh, I believe that's what you take out of that. So um, it's right here. Yeah. We'll, we we'll look at that as soon as we get some numbers. Um, you want me to wait for her to come back? To I think you can go ahead and start because uh, she can get this off. Of it. Okay. okay. So what I have uh, two things. First, I would like to roll over funds from 2017 uh, for both Knox Suite and the Road and Bridge Department. Uh, the Knox Suite one, I'd like to roll over the 59,511.61 or 63 to the capital outlay for Noxious Weed. Uh, this is something that's done every year. The Noxious Weed money has to stay with this Noxious Weed uh, department. So uh, each year we want to roll this over our capital outlay and it can be utilized for whether it's equipment, uh, chemicals, what, you know, whatever is might be, might be needed for that. Um, the remaining balance, I mean, we didn't sell near as many chemical crimes last year. Uh, a few other odd end things that didn't add up. Uh, some of the health insurance parts from not having a full time employee on it all the time. All that accounted in for that. Um, so I would like to have that rolled over into that capital outlay account. Um, and then the road and bridge side, as we know, didn't get as near, near as many projects done last year due to Audible Road. So what I'd like to do with this 282,991.35 is roll that into the special highway account. Uh, and utilize that for road projects in this coming year, hopefully catch back up to where we need to be. Um, and that will give us, you know, instead of losing that money, we'll use it for strictly roads. You say that being a special highway? Yes. Uh, 
I can see where this one, but can this noxious weed roll over into capital outlay? The noxious yeah. weed capital outlay. Okay. It has its own special. Okay. It has its own. How does rolling this over affect like the two hundred two eight thousand eighteen budget? I mean, for which we like the uh, road bridge. Um, really won't affect. Well, for what we budgeted for the highway, it's actually going to exceed our budget amount. And I'm assuming you had to amend the budget to be able to use those funds. Does that sound because we budgeted well, for seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred thousand. And there's actually a million dollars in there. Can we roll that in? So if we do a contract and need to use more funds than what we budgeted, I believe we will have to amend the budget on that at that point in time. Okay, I was just wondering how that. Or, or next year, say 2019, we budget for that amount plus what we're you assuming the uh, state will bring to us. Okay, if we didn't necessarily use it in 2018, it would just roll just over rolls. into that, yeah. and then we could, it could actually be used in 19 or beyond year, whatever it is. Well, with uh, the lack of getting roads fixed up last year, I don't think you had any problem at all getting that 282,000 correct. Yeah, I believe we're going to have a lot of contract work showing up because we're, we're, the capabilities of our guys is on so much. We're going to have to have contractors come in to help us get caught back up. So. Uh, you will see a lot of that, and we'll utilize the highway fund for that. Any other discussion on those? So the, the motion would be something like? Should we do them individually or together? You may want to explain because we're talking about the uh, is two amounts. different <laughs> rollover amounts into uh, respectively one's road and bridge. Special highway and the other is uh, not just weed capital yeah, outlay. Right. So it's fifty nine thousand. Correct, that's the not just weed one. So I'd make a motion to roll over fifty nine thousand five hundred eleven dollars and sixty three cents from noxious weed to the noxious weed capital outlay fund. I'll second that one. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? That's 3 0. I would move that we roll over in 2017 an amount of $282,991.35 to the 2008 road, uh, highway fund. 2008? It would be the special highway. Uh, if that's motion, I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Pass through zero. Okay. So Will we have to do a uh, amendment to the budget, Michelle, to roll that over? Not to roll it over, but to yeah, use it to use it. When we get to that budget. point where we would actually be using the funds in excess of what we already budgeted for, we I would see, have to. I, I said yes. Yeah, right. And we probably wouldn't need to do anything until we got to that point, or at least at the end of the year, we would have to make note if we don't that. Okay, the next thing I have is I had sent out uh, for bids, I guess you would say, uh, for signage. This is basically my, I can say, second stage of replacing the road name signs throughout the county. Uh, what is here is I've sent out four different vendors, I got two back, uh, to replace the signage that is on the um, signage project that's going to happen this March through whenever they complete. These signs will actually cover every sign that they take down. We will replace with these new signs. Um, that contract does not replace road name signs, it just replaces the stop sign. So when they take that stop sign down, they're removing the road name signs. Um, this was a cost share program, wasn't it? That is not. The it's signage not. project is. Um, this is something that we had to fund fully on our own. It was not anything state would um, fund or include into their project. So 
we have to provide these signs and place them ourselves, and the contractor does the other sign. So initially, we're going to follow that contractor around and place the signs. And there'll, there'll be probably three to four stages of this. Like I said, the first stage was replacing all the highway uh, approach signs there. So all the highways on all of our county roads all have the new signs. This stage is to follow the sign grant, and then the next stage will be either the rest or remaining signs on the county roads. And then depending on how much is left, the township roads will all be covered after that. And we are in charge of maintaining all the road name signs on township uh, roads also. Should I go ahead and uh, one bid was from J and A Traffic Products, um, Blue Springs, Missouri, giving a total amount of twenty nine thousand seven hundred forty six dollars and no cents. And the other bid was from National Sign Company Incorporated out of Ottawa, Kansas, and a total amount of. $28,388.80. Have you worked with either one of these national signers who we use on a day to day basis? And they are great to work with and very timely. They were also the cheapest, but they're correct. They are the cheapest. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we go with National Sign. National Sign Company in the amount of $28,388. Eighty cents. Do I hear a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Pass three zero. Now this amount is just for the first stage. This isn't a total figure for the whole complete job. Correct. This is just the portion that is on the state prior, the HRR sign project. This is any sign they're going to replace that has our road name signs. This is the sign. <coughs> Do you need these? Well, well I need them to. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. I'm trying to get your thing. We have six minutes. Can you hear us? Thanks. We just sent it. Well, I have something else. If you want to do it, it's done so. Next Monday, I have a. Conference call with Mark. And I think it's to discuss what committees that maybe people might want to participate in. Mark, I think was Roger getting get together. Or Michelle, do you know? I think you remember. I believe he was. Yeah. And kind of give us his recommendation. Is this it, one should go here. Is Roger on vacation or is he around? Or? He's back today. He's been gone for. Okay, I'll, I'll write him down tomorrow. Well, before Monday, he, he was here this morning. Uh, if, if we get done early enough, I'll walk out and talk to him. We should be yeah, done for her time. What do you call the committee assignments? Yeah. You guys still pen. Hmm? You guys still pen. If you lose that five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle, has there been anything um, more done with the uh, county government day? Have you been? No, there hasn't. Been. Okay. I talked to Jerry Kaufman, though. So Jerry's interested in doing some changes as well. Okay. I need to get with Donna and Jerry and the the judges all together. That's something we need to do. Hmm? Okay, we're waiting on we're doing a bid opening at one thirty for the lease purchase financing of the cat wheel order. Sure we don't have the representation.
you know, if you're sitting at home looking out your window, you wouldn't dare out. But you got drive. It's not too bad. It's, it's like that one guy said. It wasn't so much ice. It was kind of a buildup of a slush, and it would kind of pull you. Yeah. That's what I had. Uh, actually, the county road from Eppingham to Lancaster wasn't treated and drove better than when I got to the highway from Lancaster coming in, which had that partially slick, partially some ruts and, and slick spots there, and and there was grooves, so when you'd meet a vehicle, it didn't feel like you could really steer away from it. You felt like you were stuck in that track, like a train track. Yep, from about 2 o'clock to was 6 o'clock, it was straight ice water. I mean, that, that was probably a whole period, and then about 6 o'clock, that slush hit. That actually helped out. So. You said exchange in the bank of Atchison. And building equipment. Have you heard anything from ASAF? The since the letter? No. What did we ask them for? Basically, it was their books up, gives their financials. It was the Sign Bureau of Information Act. It was the how much money they have. That's something they were supposed to report to us? Um, yeah, well, we had a right to ask for it. Um, we, no, we probably asked for more than what they were obligated under the agreement to provide. So I think it was broader than that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get a letter from K Camp in regards to one of the um, um, claims that they were helping us with with the um, attorney assist stuff and um, they're closing the case so they sent that today um, basically it's a bill for us to pay for our portion so that that was a claim that was made by an inmate for reimbursement of medical care the, the inmate was uh, Marty Eiler um, he was on he claims that he was injured in the uh, in the jail while eating a Dorito that he tore something in his throat. He went on work release and while he was on work release went to uh, the Edson Hospital. The Edson Hospital had him transferred to St. Joseph and unbeknownst to jail staff or the sheriff he had surgery performed uh, during that time he was at it. And this was a claim that was brought uh, by the Exit Hospital against Mr. Eiler. Mr. Eiler then warned the county as a party to that action. Um, I'm a thousand percent convinced that the law is that we're not responsible for it if we didn't arrange it. But we are responsible to provide reasonable medical care to all inmates and to not do so violates the Eighth Amendment. But in a situation where we don't have anything to do with arranging the medical care, we're not obligated to do it. Um, under our contract with K Camp, however, um, we are required to utilize their counsel to handle that claim, which uh, we talked about before, and I uh, was not a big fan of that. Um, that's not a lot of money, uh, or half, if you will. But, um, it, it is over in the the candidate for that. Okay, so is this something then that we need to act on? We, we, we owe that. We do owe that, so we need to actually have a vote on it. Or if somebody needs to submit mm -hmm. it. I can submit it. A, a voucher. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I can definitely. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if it needed to be one, go through the process or if this was just an informant uh, informing us of what's going on. Informing you of what's going on. Mm -hmm. 
What was the total amount that one did? Nine hundred fifty dollars and twenty-two cents. Nine fifty twenty-two. Okay. Well, we need to take the readers off the menu. Need to do what? Take the readers off the menu. That's right. Uh, does anybody try to call PepsiCo as possible? <laughs> well, they should be liable <laughs> for the party too. So I'm sure they've been through those before. Okay, let's open the bids. You want to do this? I'm just going to open them and present them. We've got three returns, um, Bank of Atchison, Exchange Bank, and Foley Equipment. The first one I have here is Exchange Bank Interest. And the proposal is 190000 with the interest rate of 3.53%. Annual payments of $42,119.50. Um, and the bid is good until the 20th of May, 2018. And they have an amortization schedule with it. Anything else on this that you need? This is the one from Cat Finance. Um, interest rate is 3.5%. Annual payments 42,101.43. An additional fee of $300. What is that like? A it, it doesn't say. It just says additional fee of 300. Um, it may say in here. Is that just a, an initial? But it's not an annual fee. It's just a no. one-time fee. Uh, the bid's good until tomorrow. So does it give one? a total of what the, all the payments include for the dollar bill? I don't see a grand total of payments on here. This one does. <laughs> This one, the total payments would be two hundred and ten thousand five ninety seven fifty through Exchange Bank. And then Bank of Atchison. They as well sent an amortization schedule. Bank of Atchison, um, the interest rate. 3.48 annual payments would be $42,060.67. Additional fees is $1,000 upfront, one time fee. The bid's good until May 1st of 2018. I you got the calculator there. What's a thousand dollars mean to the interest on? Well, hundred ninety thousand zero ninety one. Um, by my math, the uh, the exchange bank would have we would have five payments of forty two thousand one hundred nineteen dollars, which would be a total of two hundred ten thousand five hundred ninety seven dollars and fifty cents. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, for uh, Bank of Atchison would be five payments of the forty two thousand sixty plus another one, which. The forty-two thousand sixty dollars and sixty-seven cents. Forty-two thousand sixty dollars sixty-seven cents. Is two hundred ten thousand three hundred three point three five 
plus an additional thousand dollars would be two hundred eleven thousand three hundred three dollars and thirty. So they're higher than the exchange plan. Yes, and then uh, um, cat financing. Um, what do you get second plus? Their payments would total two hundred ten thousand five hundred seven dollars and fifteen cents plus three hundred dollars for a total of two hundred ten thousand eight hundred seven dollars and fifteen cents. So excuse me. Exchange back the cheapest. Mm -hmm. Exchange with the cheapest by two hundred and twenty dollars. Do we need a motion? I move to accept the bid for the exchange national bank. 3.53 percent with four payments. We four payments. had no closing time. Five. Five, five payments. payments, which is $210,597.50. I would second that. It's been moved and seconded to, ex to accept exchange bank. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Pass 3 0. With that being approved, do I have permission to go ahead and sign a sale agreement for to make the purchase? Uh, I think that's what makes it approved for me to sign I a sale. I think they'll, the bank will probably need a VIN number. Do you have a VIN You have to VIN I, I believe they do have a machine kicked out, um, but I don't think they can release the information until this was approved or until I sign the sale agreement. So. And actually, I have the sales okay. agreement he sent me again today. So, so you must have a VIN number on it. Let me check here. Basically, I know he said once I get the sales agreement signed, two days later we'll have it there at their shop, and then two days after that it'll be here. So within a week or two. Hey, we'll Pat, Pat, when we do a bit of financing like that, can't we just say that there can't be any fees? It just has to be an interest rate. Um, yeah, I suppose we could put whatever. Yeah, the interest rates should include any fees, so we don't have to go through this scenario. Of, we could also ask them to total the payments. Or total the payments. Yeah, so, that might be the simpler. Yeah, whatever it is, so we don't have to go through this uh, mathematical okay, thing. Okay, the used machine we're made, we're going to keep. We're going to keep the one that's currently in Atchison. We're going to move it to FNM. We're going to take the FNM machine and sell it. Purple labels or whatever. Okay. I guess with your approval, do I have permission to sell that machine? Should we have them look at it to see what they were? Should I don't think it's even <clears throat> worth anything I'm trading. I mean, it, it still runs. Yeah, but that one, yeah, it be more than the, it might be more than the purple one. I believe I'm going to ask them. I'll, I'll ask Dean to see what he says. Um, maybe throw the number to us and then I'll bring it back. See if you guys want to do that or just see what they all look on purple ways if I get some history. I asked Mr. Chairman, I thought we was putting a little bit of money down when we're financing 100% of it. I do have the serial number. He needs the serial number. Uh, can, can you email it to me? Is that, do you have any need to say? I'll see what I can do. It's basically an electronic sign. Okay. Yeah. Just, I don't know, it's their new system. So. Speech. Well, we have a stock number and a serial number on their proposal, so that would be a serial number, wouldn't it? Is it, you have it, is it 0J3R0409? No, I have a, <laughs> let, let me give it Dean and make sure I have the right machine. They might have been the machine they were talking about when we did that. QGN, is this what it is? Stock number is QGN0653. It must be a different machine now. We will see what all these are. I don't know if Like this payment or whatever it was, or the interest payments. Yeah, I'll give it Dan on getting you the number, or the serial number for the exact machine. But I, is it different than what was in the proposal? I would say that was probably a machine at that current time that we approved it that day. But I'm sure they just sold that one and moved another one in. You know, they, whatever the next machine comes up is probably the one they um, are presenting. Like this one's probably one today, but they have that's next in line. So, um, but I do have permission to sign that sales agreement then. Or do we need to vote yes. on that? 
Well, well they approved the loan, right? To me, it's an agreement. I think you approved the purchase. Okay. The form. Yeah. Yeah. Versus. John Deere. Okay. All right. Let me get that moving. We have a nice new yellow machine sitting in our yard here in a couple weeks. Okay. Is there anything else? I don't think so. Not today. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there any old or unfinished buildings? Uh, we need to discuss one office. I think the key fobs on the on the courthouse doors would be worth what that was twenty twenty nine hundred. 2800, 2900. I think that would be well spent. That's some business. And then where are we at with the uh, resident signs? Uh, we just kind of keep pushing that off and off and off. The new blue signs for the 911. We need yeah, to either say yes, we need to get going, or no, we're not going to do it. Wes is handling that. And we need it next week to come in and update us when we are so we get moving on. Uh, well, on that key fobs, that was, I think, uh, Joe came up while you were absent and actually kind of talked more and finalized the, the door, getting the doors replaced. The key fobs are an option that we can do at any point. We don't have to right, do them now. Do right now. Everything will be included and wired, so if we ever go want to do that, we don't have to do a bunch of retrofitting with the new doors. So um, if we want to wait and see what the doors are first. Well, do I think I'm with Bill. I think the key fobs. It's got to be cheaper to do it up front. The universe is going back now. So, Joe, I, he, he, like Mr. Chairman said, it's something that could be added on. We didn't discuss if it's going to be more expensive later on. But as old as those locks are in those doors and how many keys are scattered out, and I think security reason, I think it's worth it. Well, but if we're replacing the doors, I assume we would have new keyways and new locks we wouldn't be using the the keys that are there because the new doors will have we will be basically starting over with the new set of doors. Know, yeah, I don't know if that's yeah, the keys were included with the door prices. Well I imagine they pr provide two or three and then if you need more you, you know, create your own like any other key. But I got thinking about that that's something we hadn't considered for at least the time being we would be eliminating it'd be like re rekeying your door. Uh, for a time, we wanted to see where we wanted to be. Um, I know maybe we need a little bit more information to Joe the cost. Do you need to get him on the agenda next week? Yeah, oh, okay. along with Wes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we need we need to decide on the the mm -hmm. sign where we want to go forth. Or well, key fobs are like nineteen ninety technology. I'm sure they've improved. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have some calls to have the keys made, yeah. so, I don't know. Yeah, I really, where it's nice to have the key folds, you know, it's 2800 bucks. Um, I would probably at least go, not vote for it now, but, you know, I, I'm not saying it's not a good thing. So as a percentage of the total project, it's going to We'll have Joe come up and, and just uh, have him figure the key fobs and then have him figure how many keys we had to have made, what's that going to cost. And I think, I mean, you guys is, um, are ultimately in charge of basically who would get keys <coughs> point, um, or fobs. Um, well, I think that would fall on the department heads. Each department head would be, you know, decide. Which employees or all employees have got their keys? How is that now? Is there like a master list of people that's got keys, or is it? Do we have any idea who's got? We keys? have no idea. Well, um, 
I, I know from my experience, if you log in with your badge, which is another way of doing it, I knew who went in the door. Came, so when the key, we don't know who used the key. Yeah, that's true. Too. And we don't even know if the key got lost or, you know, I or if they made was, three more. Yeah. That was the thing that, that as far as the security, 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 because you can, if somebody leaves, you can shut that key fob off immediately. You can shut that key fob off before they get out the door, um, so they can't be used. And there's they a record. They can throw it away. And there's a permanent probably. record if you wanted to download who, who's been in and at what time. Well, and there's also a record if you tried it, your fob wasn't good anymore. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that ought to be in the survey when somebody moves on, they should, their key should be turned in. Mm -hmm. well, and that's probably, with the key fobs anymore, it's probably one of those that you can reuse or re, uh, reconfigure. Else. If it's turned in, it could be a oh, yeah. different signal put on it and just use the same thing. Okay. Uh, county councilor updates. Yes. Um, we, we also need to put on something um, further discussion about a charter resolution for the uh, treasurer for the collection of taxes. Um, there, we had talked about. Uh, you could require that taxpayers who want to pay delinquent taxes must pay the most current year of tax first. Uh, and the net effect of that would be that to keep the property out of the tax sale, at least every three years, someone would have to have their property taxes current to keep them from being in the tax sale. Uh, that requires a, um, a charter resolution. And the charter resolution is because the state statute is not uniform to all counties because the statute gives Johnson County a different treatment than the rest of the state. And in Johnson County, it says that their delinquent taxes are applied first to the most current tax year, uh, and, or the most current delinquent tax year. So, so I think the taxes now wouldn't have to pay the second half of uh, 2017 taxes. But, uh, I'm getting off in the weeds. Uh, but because it's not uniform, we can opt out of the state statute and we can get that essentially that same treatment that Johnson County has. Uh, Wyandotte County has done that. I'm not aware of any other counties that do it. Speaking to our yeah. treasurer, she, that's what she would like to say. Too. She, she is in favor of it. She was in last week. Was it last week, Linda? And well, I talked to a lot of that, so. Yeah, but last we, week we, we actually, actually had one. I think it was last week. Mm -hmm. what? I think we should consider yeah. putting it up for a vote. A, a vote of the people or a vote of the, the okay. Okay. commission? commission. Uh, so the, the timeline, and um, the timeline I wanted to talk about when you wanted to do that, because after you do a charter resolution, it has to be published for two weeks. It takes effect 60 days after. The final publication, unless there is a protest petition filed, and the uh, then if there is a protest petition filed, and that is, I believe, two percent of the people that voted in the last election have to sign to ask that it be brought to an election. And if that is done, the election has to be between 30 and 90 days of the. Uh, filing of the protest petition. So I did just some kind of figuring on dates and we have a, a primary election on August 7th and a general election on November 6th and those are um, statewide elections so I assume we're going to have at least on statewide offices primaries so that we wouldn't it would be cheaper to have the special election if there were to be one on one of those two days. Um, they, by statute, they're spread out just um, imperfectly because um, I was trying to figure when we might adopt it and then do the publication because the, the dates are triggered based on the final publication. Uh, I think it's unlikely. My experience with protest petitions is very small. I've seen, I think, two of them. Um, but my, uh, that experience is people wait until like 
nearly the last day, more than the last day to file the, the petition. But if we adopted it on April 24th um, and did publication on April 28th and May 5th, the earliest to publicate a protest petition could be done would be on that Monday, which would be May 7th. And if they did that, the last day to have the election would be August 6th. Uh, the primary is August 7th. I think it's unlikely somebody is going to come in on Monday after it's published on Saturday. Um, they have 2% of the signatures on, on hand. Right? right, but they could be gathering them as soon as you adopt it. Um, that's just one day. Um, but that's, I think it would be unlikely that that would happen. Um, the last day that they could file the protest petition would be July 4th, which of course the holidays so would make it July 5th uh, in that event. And the earliest election you could have then would be August 4th, which is a Saturday. So the August 7th election would work for that. If you, so that's kind of my recommendation is that you want to have the last publication on May 5th. Um, and so your adoption could really be any time before that. It doesn't have to be published immediately. But, um, when was your date then? Uh, April what? Um, the last, the first publication would be April 28th. So on Tuesday, April 24th, I would recommend uh, to take it off. If you wanted to have more time, you'd take it up on the 17th of April. And you don't have to publish right away. You could wait a week before you published. Let's well, move it up a week just in case we slip on the line and we have it on the cushion. Okay. 17th of April, we'll let them. That's also odd because they need to that. Well, I've been in contact with them on the writing, so they may want to mm -hmm. write that more right up. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing you need to get that set. If there was a problem there, could it be addressed then later and go with the general election? I mean, if. Uh, yeah, that is a protest. The statute well, requires that the election be called within 30 days and held within, um, within 90. What I'm saying is if we didn't want to use the primary election, we could all actually also gear it towards the general election in, in yeah. theory. Yeah, you could. Um, okay. You would want to go to a, yeah, a later date. Um, I, I don't know, see a reason for it, but I'm saying this, if we go with the first one, if there is a problem or technical, something that we run into, we could still do it uh, after that and and run it on to the, if there would be a protest, it could go to the November election. Uh, yeah, you, you could. Uh, okay. We have another shot at it that way, without having to call a special election. Yeah, we don't want to. There's no need to have that. Set yourself a thousand dollars. Well, I hadn't really thought about it, but if you if you did adopt it at the end of May, um, protest period would start June 11th, and if somebody did come in on the first day, you could have the election at the primary, and if they came in on the last day, you could have the election at the general. That would work. How much you had to do within 90 days? Well, but the 90 days of the protest. At the protest, the last publication was June 9th. We have until August 8th to, uh, to file it, and the November 6th is the last day, and that is the election day. Yeah, so. yeah that's getting close. Well, but it's, it's within the time, so. And then it works on the other end, too, if they filed it. Immediately the first day. So, will we have enough time to put it on the ballot? Yeah. Um, the, the notice of special election by statute only requires 15 days' notice, uh, which kind of shocked me. But, uh, well, I don't foresee a, a protest. I mean, to start with 2%. Yeah. I mean, never know. 
Um, I guess another, yeah. May 29th, maybe that does make more sense because you can have, if it does come in very quickly, you can have it at, uh, in the primary. You can have the election as part of the primary, and if it comes in the last day, you can have it, you can have it at, the, at the general. Does it make me any difference? I mean, what, what, I guess, Pat, this is kind of your real house. I mean, what day you suggest is what I would agree with. Well, because well, that's why I didn't do that, because it's a range, because that would be if they brought it on the last possible day. If they bring it in the day before, that it wouldn't work. So I still think the April date is probably the best. Okay, let's go with that. April 21st. Um, do you have anything else, Pat? Um, not about that. Um, the tax sale, I think I told you it's uh, um, all. It is filed, and we um, we're starting the process of getting the service of process on. We set a date. Um, no, I thought we had. No, we've not set a we've not set a date. We won't. Um, no, we we. I, I don't know what if there will be answers filed. What the answers would uh, would entail. We have to have a trial. Uh, we will have to have a trial, but. Um, we're also working with the, the treasurer and the clerk of the court, Roger um, Denton, who is working on the computer side of things for us uh, about trying to make the retention process a little bit more mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Finally, um, this is something that is going to come up. It came up a couple times in the last week, which is why I'm bringing it up to you now. Um, communications companies, by statute, communications companies have the right to place their um, utilities in the road right of way, uh, but they have to do it in a method that is uh, that we agree to and that uh, doesn't obstruct traffic and we do not have any uh, policy or um, requirements about getting a, a permit to do that and we've gotten a couple of, a couple of calls about it in the past couple of weeks and one of them is the uh, the fiber optic cable from Lancaster to the district park. Yeah. And so that's, I think, something that would be a good idea to have. Uh, on the downside, we don't really have anyone that would be in charge of doing it. Um, Roger Denton had taken on doing the, uh, the locate permits for construction. This would be something similar and he'd likely be involved anyway with any of these because uh, it involves mapping and roads and we want to know where the um, where the lines are and things like that. So um, are you interested in having a um, a permit process and then we'll talk about it. We should, we'll need to get uh, Seth would be involved and uh, Roger. Roger would be involved. Yeah, I'd I say. think we should get together and talk about it and make a recommendation. Yeah, I'd like, I'd want to know more about it before just click on it. We're going to unfold on it. Next work, work session next week or are we talking? Yeah, that might be a little quick. Okay. Uh, probably in two weeks, yeah. Okay. Let's try for that. Uh, that's all I have. I have a couple of questions for you. Have we talked at one time about people using our bonding capacity. You know, the most recent one has been Benedictine College. What should be the fee for that? There's some costs on our part. Um, 
Um, well, you, you all will decide what it should be. Um, what is typical? I, I think the city is one half of one percent of the uh, total amount of the bond. Um, I don't know what common is. I don't know if other counties charge or what they charge. I can put that question on the county council list here and see. I like, I'd like to know that. Yeah, I, I would too. I think it's a good uh, follow up because I think that's something we ought to be exploring. Well, yeah. And uh, the next question would be our body capacity is $10 million, and that's based upon something in our assessed valuation, correct? You know, bonding for for the county itself, yeah. if we were going to do yeah. some, I don't, um, I don't know what the limit is. Well, the, well, the ten million is what I guess I've come to believe. We earn some each year, don't we? Well, there's it, it, there's a formula, and it is based on the assessed valuation. Uh, I I don't know. I can find that out. Okay. We we don't have. Uh, I don't think we have any exciting bonds now. Uh, what are our obligations? Do so. Uh, I can find that out if you want to have a. Well, if we're talking about bonding, we need to know how much we can bond uh, for that bridge project. So, okay, those bonds for the bridge They're project different. are outside of the uh, the debt limit um, by statute. There. Um, what we provide for Benedict and College isn't what. Um, that's what it is. A if I want to get back funding, that it isn't what we would use for our own bridge project. No, no, I understand that, but there's how much can we bond without permission of the funders? Well, um, no, I, I understand the question. Yeah, um, I see where you're uh, uh, under uh, 681101. Let me, I'm trying to get to it. Well, I understood it was we two, could go to two million. million. Two million without going to the voters mm -hmm. is the figure that we had talked about earlier, um, and that is on the, the bridge project. Yeah, I just want to make sure all my numbers are right. That's what I believe too. So. Those bonds are under KSA 68-1104 for, um, for uh, bridges and culverts. And I, I misread the statute. That that is the case, but it's only for counties having a larger population. So I don't know what that bond uh, bonded indebtedness limitation is for us. But I will find that out for you. Did you have more than one question? I have well, actually had two. But I, I asked you the question. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. How are you? This is our new managing editor. Oh, hello. Mark right. Clem. Mm -hmm. No relation to the local Clem. <laughs> Where are you from? Oh, well, I'm, I was born in Stillwell. Uh, so, uh, South of Kansas City. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, I was in Georgia for a different job until recently, and I decided I wanted to come back to my home state. So, uh, and uh, I don't know Ashton from the past, I went to Kansas State Martin when I was a kid. Oh, well, so you replace too? Hmm? Who do you replace? Oh, uh, so Adam Gardner is now our sports editor. I see. Uh -huh. Okay. You're welcome. Oh. You guys ever need anything? Give me a call. Okay. The last name is Clem. Clem. Mm -hmm. Good Irish name. <laughs> Actually, German. Oh, it's German? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this is our county clerk, Michelle. Yep, we met mm -hmm. Okay, Jack, the vice chairman. Yeah, Eric Knoll. 
Chen, Bill Cole, Henry Cole. I mean, I don't know if I can Sure, sure. Since you're in session, we did. Well, if you like the flow, you can sugar in. Welcome aboard. And then uh, I'm going to tell Michelle, uh, if you guys ever have anything related to Kennedy Page, even if it's had nothing to do with government, just something you're engaged in, you want to write, you know, probably best ways. You know. Okay. Hey, good. We, we need that occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess kind of sometimes we don't. We see all the negatives when we need to see some more positives. Yeah. We're trying to do better on that aspect and you know, get our get the word out, things that we do offer and uh, have a more friendly uh, website where people can access it and get see what we do offer. So. You know, sometimes we sit here and talk about the fact that we're providing for the community health, for entrepreneurship, for um, mental health, for the list goes on and on. Uh, but Areas that we're supporting. Uh, I guess we're just supporting it with our taxpayers' money, but we are put, we are contributing to the community in a large way. And sometimes I think we forget to brag about that. And people maybe don't realize it and don't think about accessing. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we're actually supporting it on one end, but we're not providing the the gateway for them to actually mm -hmm. utilize it. Yeah, we're not quite there yet, but what I want them to be able to do is uh, once we know an event's happening, go to the on tap calendar, boom, it's there. Uh, and then if it's, uh, you know, really just any significant at all, it, it should get a pre seed. People will know what's, ha what's actually happening and what they can do there. And once the event takes place, that'll be there and that's going to be online. You know, it's going to take some time. Uh, but uh, ultimately, we will be a twice weekly in print and a true daily on the front. Well, I've been That's watching good. your Twitter feeds. It's really stepped up a lot. So. That's good. That's good. I appreciate that. You're and so is Adams. <laughs> but they're two different feeds. But. Yeah. You ought to come down to Project Atchison and introduce yourself to a lot of people there. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was in, 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 it's not, you get me not in March. It's the first Wednesday of every month at okay. the office building. Okay. 7 o'clock. Oh, okay. okay. We got to travel here too. So. All right. Thanks, guys. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, any need for an executive session? I don't know what I know. Okay, with that. So, nothing further. Do I hear a motion to adjourn at 210? So, second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? We are adjourned.